Welcome to Trade Finance Talks, a podcast from Trade Finance Global. During this series, we'll be hearing from global experts, as well as learning about the latest trends, technology and insights in the world of international trade and receivables finance. Episode 123. I don't think it will be the complete one cure for every possible illness or challenge. My name is Pash Patel, editor at Trade Finance Global, and today I'm joined 12 months on again with Ben Ellis, SVP Global Head of Visa Business Solutions. Ben, welcome once again to Trade Finance Talks. Thank you. It is terrific to be here in Toronto. And again, it's been 12 months since we yeah. were together last in Amsterdam. We spoke 12 months ago. Can you give us a bit of an update on the cross-border payments landscape? What have been the three most important developments in this area? It's hard to limit it to just three. I think there's been a number of important developments. One, and by the way, there's been a number of important things that have also still remained are consistent. One of the big things we've seen from the perspective of a lot of the participants is the continued willingness to work together, to partner to push to sort of solve some of the challenges that have been longstanding. We at Visa and others have made progress on, but that still remain. So I think the continued efforts to partner, to cooperate has been terrific. We've seen a few of those come to fruition in the last 12 months, in the last even week in terms of what's been announced here at Cybos. I think the continued growth and momentum of some of the more recent offerings, such as Visa B2B Connect, which it continues to have momentum in the market in terms of client demand, in terms of usage, in terms of growth has been personally, in terms of what I do at Visa has been a terrific thing to see and, and to help build and create. One of the things that we've seen is a continued realization that cross-border payments is a core part of what makes the world economy go. And there are going to be changes. There's going to be challenges with the economy. There's going to be challenges with what's going on in banking systems around the world. And the need for cross-border payments to work and to work well is what doesn't change. How do you continue to provide those levels of service despite whatever challenges may be faced by all the participants in payment networks around the world? Thank you, Ben. And I guess also, lastly, you told us that an overwhelming number of corporates still experience those pain points associated with cross-border payments. How are Visa and players from across the industry coming together to address some of these? It's interesting, right? So when we first started B2B Connect, there were a number of pain points we were trying to tackle. And we heard these when we were talking to our clients and doing some of our research around the industry. And there are pain points like predictability, right? So if I send the money, how do I know when it will arrive? How do I know how much will arrive? Transparency. So when I send the money, how can I track it along the way and in route? How do I make sure that it travels quickly, right? Which happens many times, but sometimes there's holdups or mistakes. That's a lot of why we launched B2B Connect was to try to, to help address this. And one of the things that we've done that we announced actually here at Cybos was a partnership with Visa and Swift, where we're working together with Swift. And one of the things we're working on is pre-validation. So how do you check the details of a payment, count number, things of that nature before it gets sent so that if there is an issue or a mistake, you can identify it up front. That helps with speed. It helps with predictability. The payment goes through faster and goes through with fewer uh, challenges. We also are working with them on trackability with GPI data so that you can make sure that the status of the payment can be checked and verified. That helps a lot with transparency. These challenges that we've seen and heard and experienced, we are continuing to work and to identify ways to continue to address and address in stronger and stronger and stronger ways. And we're excited about the announcement and it's fun to see the reaction here at Cybus. Very exciting. And I guess with increased traceability, predictability, and the ability to correct things before they go wrong, so to speak, I guess there is a real role for emerging technologies. Can you perhaps talk about some of the more promising technological advancements that might not yet be integrated fully into cross-border payments, but they're coming? Yeah, I think one of the big opportunities to increase the degree to which there's common standards and common rules that the participants agree on. And I think there's a part of it, which is technology, which is great. I think there's a part of it also, which is, you know, how do we come to an agreement understanding on what we'll do? And that could be everything from when payments will be posted. It can be everything from, you know, whether deductions will be taken or in what way. The more that there can be a common approach to this, I actually think it's better for all participants all around because you can take out a lot of the expenses, you can take out some of the challenges, give a more predictable experience, a more standard experience. And those types of things really, at the end of the day, provides a better experience for those who are sending the payments and those who are receiving the payments. Thank you very much. The world is moving rapidly towards a digitalized future, but 
interoperability is still a key challenge. And I'm almost bored of saying it. We talk about it every year at Cybos. But I guess what are the real next steps for standardization? And how do you think ISO 2008 is playing a role in this? I think ISO will help quite a bit. I don't think it will be the complete one cure for every possible illness or challenge. What the ISO standard does, it provides a common framework, a common language, one that's been developed specifically for this purpose, a way that can include additional fields in a structured way that wasn't there before. And part of the challenge in different standards is sometimes the information or data is there, but it's not in a structured way. It's in a freeform field or it's in a field that has been repurposed from the original purpose to what you're trying to use it for. That's okay as long as the parties know well, if you need this, go look in this field and that's where it's going to be. But if you can do it in a structured way where the same fields mean the same thing to all the participants and it's known and it's defined, it makes it a lot more straightforward. It makes it a lot more interoperable because you can now have a different way to do the interpretation and port over into new areas. It's a way to build that foundation for a lot of future technology development. Yeah, I guess it's a good move from the old MT, some of the XML formats into more of that JSON rich schema. The transition is never easy, Yeah, but people are happy when they're on the other side. I guess as cross-border payments continue to get more and more complex as supply chains and the movement of money becomes more complex, I guess security is quite an important topic, right? What's Visa doing to address some of these concerns? I think security is paramount because it's one of the things that it's a little bit like auction. Sometimes you take it for granted until it's not there. The biggest thing for us is, and we've seen this a lot on Visa's traditional card business, which is it can't be just one party's responsibility. And so one of the things that Visa can do as an ecosystem player is really make sure that we are encouraging and driving the right level of security across the industry. Because an industry like payments, where you have different levels of cooperation and a payment might start with the bank, it might go to a network, it might end up at another bank. You need security all the way throughout. The degree to which Visa can help with the right standards, the right checks, the right approaches, and help ensure that that's the case across all parts of the ecosystem, it can really help drive that level of security that makes it consistent all the way throughout. Thank you, Ben. Going back to your SWIFT partnership and talking about those three themes, the payment pre-validation, the SWIFT GPI piece and Alliance Cloud. When we're sitting here in 12 months time, what does good look like for you? It's a great question. And 12 months from now, we'll be in Beijing at Cybos. I think in terms of what good looks like, you know, we'd like to see some of the benefits of it, right? So if you're thinking about pre-validation, that should come through in terms of more straight through processing, more transactions going through as expected, fewer rejects, fewer recalls. And for things that do need to be changed because there is a mistake in terms of the original instructions, it gets resolved quicker. I think on the GPI, one of the terrific things that it can do is it can help scale and streamline because some of these questions about, well, where's the payment and hasn't been received yet can be resolved in a more automated and more self-serve way through API. When you look at those types of things, you're taking cost out of the system, you're providing a better experience, you're providing more straight through experience. All of these things are good for the ultimate senders, the ultimate receivers. They're good for the banks too, right? It's one of these things where you can provide actually a better service and oftentimes at a lower cost. It's a win-win. Thanks, Ben. So faster, more transparent, more secure. Thank you for the updates and thanks for joining us on Trade Finance Talks. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Looking forward to seeing you again in next year. Thanks for listening to Trade Finance Talks. Be sure to subscribe to our podcasts at tradefinanceglobal.com.